This disease we have in Kenya, where everybody is equal, but others are more equal than the rest. Where there are two sets of laws, one law is for the ordinary Kenyan, and the other law is for the powerful, mighty, rich Kenyan, is something that has to be addressed. It has been in our country for decades. Indeed, since independence, and probably before even that. The truth is, who you are should not matter. If you break the law, it should not matter who you are. It should not matter who your father is. Well, on my show today, I look at a very interesting, super fascinating case that unfolded recently involving the Inspector General of Police. Yeah, his son. Karibu sana and enjoy. You know there's a disease we have in Kenya, a very bad disease, yeah, and I've seen it for decades. That disease is, do you know who you're dealing with? Unajua who you ni nani? What that means is that if a Kenyan commits a crime and the police are about to arrest him, the police themselves will come up to the person who wants to arrest that person who has broken the law and tell them, do you know who you're dealing with? Do you know who is involved in this? Oh, yes. Let me give you a quick story. My late political lecturer used to play everything by the book. And one day he seized some illegal coffee yeah, at the railways. In Nairobi, the coffee was from a place called Chepkube, near the border with Uganda, and it was on transit on its way to Mombasa. As the arresting officer, my late political lecturer, seized that coffee and issued instructions that the people behind that cargo should be identified immediately and arrested immediately. He wasn't naive. He knew who the coffee belonged to. Yeah, but as I told you, he played everything by the book. So that if somebody revisits that incident 100 years from now, they will say, this officer, whoever he was, did the right thing. He did his job. But the police commissioner, yeah, in those days, nowadays the inspector general of police, came to him and told him, do you know who you're dealing with here? He must have assumed that the arresting officer had no idea, that they were naive. Yeah, they didn't know what was happening. And the arresting officer's response? Does it matter? A crime has been committed. I have to do my job. I took an oath to do my job. And as a result of doing his job, that arresting officer had to live in fear for more than half a year, carrying a fully loaded gun everywhere he went to defend himself and expecting at any time to be the victim of an assassination. By the way, that cargo belonged to somebody who was very close to the then president of the Republic of Kenya, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta. Fast forward to the present, the son of the Inspector General of Police in Kenya is involved in an accident incident 
where two people lose their lives. Everything points to the fact that the vehicle must have been overspeeding. There are some who are even saying that the driver of that vehicle, the son of the inspector general, was drunk. Those are mere allegations. However, those allegations would have been very easy to prove false had the proper procedure been followed. Which is the accident happens, the person surrenders to the police or reports to the police, the police investigate and tell him the way forward. But what happened? The person flees the scene. And so if they were drunk, they would have more than enough time to sober up. And then I saw in some sections of the press they said he was arrested. No, nobody was arrested. What happened is that he surrendered himself to a police station the next day. And when the young man surrendered himself, he was released on a police bond as police investigations into the matter continue. Now hold on a minute. What if that was an ordinary Kenyan? A Kenyan whose father is not the Inspector General of Police. Do you know what would have happened? <laughs> Had they fled the scene, like this son of the Inspector General, they would have been looked for and arrested. And already there there's a crime. Failing to report a road accident. Already there's a crime. Before you even talk about the bigger issue, where some Kenyans lost their lives. Folks, it is this disease I'm talking about, which I will call, do you know who I am? Do you know who you're dealing with? Which simply means that all Kenyans are equal under the law. But there are some Kenyans who are more equal than others. To quote that classic animal farm. Bila kizungumingi, it means that there are some Kenyans who are above the law. I saw it with my political lecture in the 70s, over 30 years ago, and it still exists to this day. Do you know who you're dealing with? You know, this thing is very sad. Because in this instance, do you know some innocent people would have been arrested and made to suffer? Do you know that it is possible that in such an incident, the victim, oh yes, can end up being arrested and charged in a court of law <laughs> for being a victim <laughs> for something they didn't do? The only crime for being involved in an incident, for being in the wrong place at the wrong time, and being involved in an incident which involved Mtoto wa mkubwa. That is Kenya for you. Now we know the police are investigating. But multiple sources that I trust are telling me. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. Kwa sabu ni mtoto wa mkubwa. This is not a nobody. Let me see. Multiple sources are telling me that had the correct procedure been followed, the real cause of that accident would have been instantly recognized and prosecuted. Now, before I go, just a short message to our young people. You know we are heading towards the festive season. Indeed, we are already there. And we are also heading towards the general election. Those two are deadly combinations in our country. Because road accidents increase. Yeah, I've talked about that in another video. You'll find the link in the description area below. Then you'll understand. And therefore, please be careful on our roads. Nobody will shoot you for driving slowly. It doesn't mean that you're not cool. If you drive a vehicle slowly, the way a grandfather like Kumekucha Chris would drive, in fact, it could save your life. Many times, it will save your life. Don't drive if you're drunk. 
Don't even drive if you are just a little tipsy. Don't. Take a cab. Get somebody else who's sober to drive you. I don't know how you view Kenyan roads. Or how you think when you get behind a wheel and you're driving on a road. And you're feeling good about yourself. And good about the vehicle you're driving. Yeah. Maybe you feel when don't wish you. However, the roads are a death trap, my friend. Things can change on the road, not in a second, in milliseconds. And your life can be snuffed out. Or you can end up paralyzed for the rest of your life. This is not a joke. This is about your life. Please, please, young people. Please, I beg you. Be extra careful. Extra vigilant. Until next time, this is Chris Komekuja.